Hello, gang. How's it going? Welcome to week two. I uh, wanted to reach out and make a quick video to uh, just, first of all, say thank you for the depth and genuineness of your first week's post. So, um, you know, I saw that people really shared quite a bit of their, um, you know, experience and things that they were passionate about and things that led them into their career decisions. And uh, that's probably one of the, the better introductions I've ever seen. It was just integrated into the, into the class. I really appreciate people just being open and willing to share. Um, a lot of you also are in the, the group counseling class, so maybe that's maybe a parlay over, uh, but um, I, I really appreciate it. Um, it, was, it was very good. Uh, I had a chance to give feedback and just say hello to a lot of you. So, um, so yeah, thank you. Uh, this is a, you know, not an experiential class, but I, the, the more that you can share and reflect and, and just be kind of personal with each other, the, the better the class is. So I want to jump into this week uh, rather quickly here and just kind of help people uh, to navigate through the resources. So module two, I just gave a really brief introduction here. Um, you'll notice that your textbook jumps right into a lot of the classic theorists. And so these names will be on uh, exams, you know, they always want to match people, you know, the theorists to the, the theory and all that good stuff. So the, the I'll, I'll kind of guide you through that in just a moment in the text. It's not going to take a lot of time. Um, you know, Super, Holland, Gottfriedson, uh, Rowe, those, those names are important to remember because they uh, were foundational in career guidance. Um, and so uh, here, here are your tasks for this week read through chapter two, taking notes about the highlights. So again, when you're trying to study for these things, it's usually best not to get caught up on the, the little nuances, except uh, we'll get there with Holland. Holland has a lot of little nuances that are kind of important, but, but super, you know, knowing that that's a developmental theory, kind of a lifespan, life space understanding, uh, knowing that Crumbles is more this planned happenstance. You put yourself in situations to learn whether you truly like something or not. You'll learn something through each one of your uh, your interactions um, and kind of grow in that way. Uh, and then and then Holland really personality types the RIASEC. Yeah, that's a R I A S E C. That's a good mnemonic to know uh, going into a lot of the exams because really trying to match people up to their careers based on personality. Each one of these have its own strengths and its own weaknesses. So uh, we'll kind of go over that. And then you'll want to complete the, the compare contrast assignment. And that's, that's really, it. we're not going to have a, we're not going to have a discussion board. What, an online class with no discussion board? Yeah, it, it happens every once in a while. So yeah, it's, it, this is an assignment instead. I know you all be busy. So, and I know you, given the depth that you all talked about in the, uh, the, the discussion that you talked about here week one, I have no doubts that, uh, that you'll take this seriously and do well. So let's jump into the, uh, the book real quickly here. And so you'll see here's chapter two. I've got the digital edition here. So going into chapter two, and you'll see a lot of the different uh, career development theories. And so super is lifespan, life space theory. Uh, again, it's really developmental in nature. It's kind of looking at the different stages of a person's life and kind of how that relates to their ambitions and their motivations toward uh, a career. So you're welcome to look through those. Uh, all, you know, life space also recognizing that, kind of like Eric Erickson, that you know, your life circumstances change. Uh, you have different tasks, different stages of life. Um, so you can also go through and uh, you know, read through the, you know, the evaluating superis theory there's some, there's some positives about it. And really, again, this is one of the, the initial ones where people hadn't really thought about career. And so uh, definitely some, some groundbreaking information, but leave some ideas out too. So you're welcome to, to look through that. And so you have this thing in the back of your text where you evaluate and there's kind of a critique of each one of these theories. I'd use that for your compare contrast as you're working through. Anne Rose, personality theory. To me, kind of relates to John Holland's theory of, of personal types. Uh, there's not a lot of information about Anne Rowe in here, but it's worth noting her name. Uh, Linda, Linda Gottfriedson's theory of circumscription. 
Um, so you can look through there. Uh, this hasn't really gained a lot of traction in recent years, uh, but it's again, it's worth knowing her name and a little bit about what you know her circumscript circumscription uh, and how it relates to um, guidance counseling. Now, the one really to kind of pay attention to here, I would say, is John Holland received a lot of uh, a lot of research to kind of try to support the ideas, and and I would say that um, you know there, there's also been a lot of traction. <laughs> keep using that word. Been, been a been a lot of attention paid to matching personality types with, with different careers, and so there's something to that, but it's not necessarily all predictive or, or, or wholly explanatory. So here's what I meant by the RIASEC, the realistic type, the investigative type, the artistic type, the social type, the enterprising type, and the conventional type. And so generally you'll see like almost like a Venn diagram, not quite, you'll see kind of spectrums, this pinwheel, the circular R-I-A-C-E-S-E-C, -E diagram where you have different careers in each one of these. Uh, so it's kind of like matching the career to your personality um, and having some congruence in that. So, and, and you know, developing a, a vocational identity. Now there's definitely some weaknesses to that. And so I'd want you to look through and evaluate Holland's theory there at the back of the text. The one I paid most attention to it, uh, is because I did uh, I found the most credence in my own existence with John Crumble's learning theory of career counseling. And here's the, I, I shared a PowerPoint. And so really you'll notice with just uh, almost any, uh, I'll, I'll, no, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna, I don't use always, but I'm gonna use always here. You will always know a relationship to a person's personal life and their theory. So for instance, we have all these folks like Freud and, and B.F. Skinner, Eric Erickson, um, you know, Carl Rogers, uh, you know, you know, B.F. I've mentioned B.F. Skinner. I'm kind of going for the, um, the guys, the CBT guys, uh, and their names are escaping me now. Um, Beck and Ellis. So you can look at their upbringing their lives, their social influences, and clearly see where their theories came from. Uh, it, you know, we don't live in a vacuum. We don't live in a complete bubble. And we don't, you know, just don't come up with ideas a priori where, oh, it just sprung up from nowhere. Uh, so you'll see that, you know, each one of these theories and each theory in psychology, I will postulate, is limited somewhat by the the human worldview of each one of the theorists because of what their experiences are. So um, what I would caution is that some, you know, as we live in this area of post truth or whatever, I would caution that someone who has a very limited scope and interaction with humanity has, uh, has even less ground to stand on as far as carrying weight into their, uh, their ideas into the world. Um, I, given what maybe some exceptions where people are maybe deeply meditative or, or you know live in a you know a monastery somewhere you know where they're just you know simply meditating on human condition now there's nothing to be said for that but there's also something to be um, critiqued in if you just sit on Facebook and and just look at your news feed and and come up with your uh, come up with your ideas about the world from there too because you're getting a confirm uh, uh, excuse me confirmation bias from all your sources but anyway that's beside the point let's jump into this and sometimes I'll go off on a tangent and I just have to follow it or else I won't uh, I won't get it out of my mind so Krimble's theory of, of, of career counseling is really based on this thing called planned happenstance and planned happenstance really has its roots in his good buddy uh, from, from Albert Bandura. And if anybody remembers Albert Bandura, it's social learning theory, right? So it's social reinforcement and behavioral change. So kind of taking off of B.F. Skinner to a degree, we learn from our experiences. Uh, Albert Bandura really focused on our social experiences. And if you remember, he was famous for the, the Bobo doll. And uh, you're welcome to follow these links here 
and, and watch some of the ideas that, you know, that came from Albert Bandura. You know, this vicarious learning, we learn by watching others and, and from our social environments. Um, this is interesting. So if you want to get an idea of who John Crumboltz is, here's some um, very quick YouTube uh, videos. You're welcome to watch there. Uh, I would encourage that to, if, you know, just to get an idea about the theory. Um, these two guys met actually, uh, Crumboltz and Bandura actually met on the golf course. <laughs> so they, they actually both, both taught at Stanford University. And so there, there's this free flowing share of ideas. So as Crumboltz talks about, you know, it depends on where you're at and who you interact with. Yeah, he's kind of getting that from, from Bandura because, you know, Bandura is big in this social learning and Crumboltz is learning from Bandura and vice versa. And so it's, a, you know, it's this give and take. So um, anyway, uh, what, what uh, this kind of sums up Crumboltz in a nutshell. The reluctance to make an occupational commitment in the face of an unpredictable future should be celebrated as open-mindedness, not denigrated as indecisiveness. That's from a 1998 article. That really resonated with me because I had a hard time deciding what I wanted to do. And so in my own life, uh, you know, I started out interested in psychology, um, didn't see a job market there for me, <laughs> went into business and hated it. I, I you know, I, I tried it and I, you know, I, I kind of matched up, okay, well, what I could make some money doing this, this maybe could, you know, make sure I have a future. And I literally just couldn't stand it. I was selling pencils to people. And it was just like, I'm trying to be friends with you so you'll buy something from me. And so I had this dissonance, this, this incongruence in me. And I, I, I went and I got a job working in psychology. And after about a month, I was like, the experience told me, hey, you're in the right field. So, you know, Crumble's ideas resonated with me because it was just kind of by happenstance that I figured out Hey, you know what? Psychology actually was a good thing. Uh, you know, all those all those career matching things that they said. You know, you might be good at science and English. You know, the, the matching skills. And we'll we'll talk about you know as we go on, we'll talk about other things that you can use to help students and help people. Uh, but this is this is taken from a 1976 article called "The Social Learning Theory of Career Selection." And so, even though he now calls it you know this this learning theory of career counseling. It's really social learning. It's taking your social environment and letting it interact with you and then emerging as a new person or somewhat of a changed person based uh, upon, you know, what happens. Um, you know, uh, there, there's, some, there's some things to be, uh, sub, to be critiqued here. Uh, first of all is the, the genetic endowment and special abilities. Uh, you know, this, this to where the research has gone, um, yeah, the genetic endowment piece, I think, should probably fall away. Um, we really are, uh, you know, we might have predispositions, but our environment really plays a significant role in, in what is uh, manifested in, in, as who we are as people. We could have special abilities. Definitely there's environmental condition and events, learning experiences, both instrumental and associative, and task approach skills. So uh, those are the kind of four ideas that comprise the basic theory. Um, you're welcome to look through the environmental condition and events that may play a role into, you know, determining what a person becomes as far as their vocation, as far as their career. Um, and so you, you can also look at this breakdown between instrumental learning and, and associative learning, which, you know, associative learning is more passive. Uh, you learn from reactions to environmental stimuli. I'd say I was more passive in that, hey, I'm just gonna get a job in psychology and react to it. And so these are approach skills. Uh, and so he really wants us to work on these uh, approach skills to help us have this planned happenstance. In other words, put yourself in situations where you're gonna learn. You know, ha have a little bit of planning. Just have, have the, the, the sense of doubt that, hey, I may not like this, but I'm gonna put myself out there to figure out whether this is for me. Uh, and so this is this chance encounters again. This is Bandura talking about him at the at the golf course and somehow getting paired with uh, with Crumboltz just out of you know just by dumb luck that they they didn't really know each other until this in chance encounter on the golf course. So I thought that was interesting. Again, uh, just to show that you know these theories don't just happen from from nowhere. Um, that said, I think that's all I've got. I just wanted to go in and give you a. Uh, a brief lecture just to say, hey, I'm with you. I appreciate, again, the investment you've shown so far. 
And again, no discussion board. I'll look forward to reading your assignments. We'll crank back up the discussion uh, next week. But uh, yeah, just d dig into the text. Don't worry about uh, conversing. Just kind of work with your own ideas here this week. See ya.